Hello, my name is Kevin Clay, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Today, I'm going to give you a brief uh, introduction to the X bar and R chart. Uh, the X bar and R chart is a uh, control chart, uh, and we are going to, going to be going through this tool using Minitab version 20. So a brief introduction to the uh, X bar and R uh, control chart. This is a control chart to uh, look at uh, subgroups of more than two. When, when you are more interested in understanding the variation in, in a population of, of uh, data, uh, I'm sorry, in, well, in a population of data by taking a sample. All right, and that sample should be representative uh, of that population. Uh, in this case, we're not interested in the individual points being um, having uh, too much variation in them or exhibiting common cause or special cause variation. We are more interested in, in the, uh, the population represented by the subgroup of data. So real quick, uh, a scenario. Let's say that I'm making cookies uh, and I have a, a large wad of dough. And so let's say I'm in an industrial process uh, of making cookies and I have this large wad of dough and this dough makes uh, 10,000 cookies. And I am taking a, um, a sample uh, out of a thousand cookies. Okay, so I've got my 10,000 cookies broken up into populations of 1,000. And then from that 1,000, I'm taking a, a sample size of 10. So that 10 should be representative uh, of that population. So let's say I'm, I'm checking moisture, I'm checking diameter, I'm checking the number of cookies, I'm checking thickness. Uh, and so let's, let's specifically focus on moisture. So I'm taking moisture from these 10 samples uh, and I'm not recording the 10 individual samples. I'm recording one sample. So I'm taking those 10 individual samples and I am averaging out uh, the data from all 10. Okay, that's, that's my X bar uh, in the X bar and R chart. Then I'm taking those 10 samples again and I am taking the largest sample, the, the va largest value and the, the smallest value, uh, and that's giving me a range or an R, again, in the X bar and R. So that's giving me my X bar and an R chart. Uh, and each dot uh, in my X bar and R chart is, is the average uh, and the range of that, that uh, uh, subgroup of 10 out of the, uh, the population of 1,000. So again, what I'm looking for is, is there abnormal variation in that population represented by that one dot, which is uh, uh, represented by those, those uh, uh, 10 points. Okay, so let's... Let me do something here and delete this. All right, so to get to the X bar in our chart, uh, we are going to go to the assistant. Uh, we are going to move down to control charts. Uh, we use the assistant because it really makes uh, statistical analysis easy for us. Um, and we uh, specifically teach this to our green belts to help them gain comfort uh, with statistical analysis. All right, so uh, we go, we are going to go into our X bar and R chart. All right, as you'll see here, I've already got this filled out. Uh, our data is in multiple columns. What that means is uh, that for each of our subgroups, uh, we have a subgroup of four a subgroup of four. Um, so in each one, each dot that we see in our X bar and R chart is going to be both the average of these four. Uh, that's going to be my X bar. 
uh, and then the R is going to take the highest value, which is 1.17, and subtract the lowest value, which is 0.97, and that's going to give us the range. Okay, and in this case, our uh, different subgroups uh, uh, samples, in this case, are in separate rows. Now, we are going to estimate from the data. So the data is, is going to give us our control limits, and we suggest that uh, there is a way that you can write your control limits in. Um, I wouldn't suggest that because most companies, when they do this, they set it and forget it. So the control limits after a while don't represent actually what's really going on in, in their process. So estimate from the data, that, that means that it, it's, uh, it's developing those control limits from the actual data that, that we're looking at. Okay, something uh, kind of nice in the X bar and R chart in the assistant is it uh, tells us right off the bat um, uh, that we have some out of control points, um, some points that um, have broken one of the eight WECO rules. Okay, uh, and it gives us the ability to omit those. Now, I don't suggest you do that, all right, uh, unless you are going to find out what causes those out of control points, all right? This is a good tool uh, if you say, okay, I'm going to go find out what caused these points and then, then understand why they were caused and uh, mitigate those. Uh, in that case, you, you can omit these and see what the uh, real standard deviation is uh, of your control chart without these, you know, affecting it. All right. But in this case, we're not going to do that. We want to see those points. All right. So I'll take you down to the uh, report card here. All right. So the report card really just kind of gives us some information about uh, our data. Uh, it says, that, that we don't have the stable data, right? And so stability could be in question. And, and the reason is because we have those points I showed you earlier that uh, are uh, breaking uh, one or more of those weaker rules. We, we have uh, a good amount of data enough to uh, give us precise control limits. Uh, and and we, we don't necessarily have correlated data. So again, this is just giving you a brief description of, of things that could, could be uh, wrong or right with your data. Uh, and it helps you to understand, you know, uh, do I need to move forward or do I need to go back and, and maybe collect more data, et cetera. All right, so we go to the stability to report and uh, I'm actually going to uh, move to our summary report because that uh, involves the stability as well. Okay, so it says is the process mean stable uh, and it says evaluate the percent uh, percentage of out of control subgroups. It doesn't tell you if, it, if it's uh, stable or not. It, it says it may not be stable with um, uh, 1.1 percent of the subgroups is out of control. So th this is really, you know, it has to be for you the, to decide. I I educate and, and my colleagues educate my green belts that if we have any points that are that show up in a red dot, that's instability. But we also uh, we also only use the first rule of what's called the weaker rules. So if you get a chance and, and you want to learn more about those rules, uh, it's, it's uh, again, the weaker rules, W-E-C-O, weaker rules. Uh, and there, there are eight of those rules uh, when it comes to the X bar and R charts. Uh, we tell our green belts, you know, we only really follow the first rule. Uh, because that that that's going to give us the the most uh, significant effect. Okay, so in this case, our range chart actually uh, breaks the that rule. Uh, and that rule is any point that falls outside of the uh, control limits, either of the range chart or uh, the X bar chart. 
right? So in this case, we would, uh, we would stop uh, and we, we would say, you know, what, what really is causing those points to happen? Uh, and that could, uh, that could be a signal as to what, uh, what the solution might be to uh, solve the problem that we are uh, engaged in investigating in a Lean Six Sigma project. All right, uh, this is a, a pretty simple, pretty basic tool, but it's, it's hugely useful. Uh, and it's useful in all of the stages of the DMAIC process. Uh, so learning uh, the X bar and R chart, uh, the other charts, the IMR chart, the attribute charts is, is a, a, a very useful um, skill to have in the uh, uh, Lean Six Sigma uh, tool belt. So hopefully you have uh, learned a little bit more about the XVAR and R charts. Uh, again, my name is Kevin Clay, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions uh, Incorporated. Uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, my email address is kclay at sixsigmadsi.com. I will put that information down in the uh, uh, description below of this YouTube video. Um, and I would like you to have a wonderful day. And uh, thank you.